My name's Ellen. Um, I grew up in Newton on Davis Street, right behind the cinema. Um, we actually live in the house, or we lived in the house that my dad grew up in, and right down the street from my grandparents. And now I live in Austin. So close enough for my mom to be happy, but far enough away that I have some space. Okay. This is called Enough. There are four children within each of us. The wise, the wicked, the simple, the one who does not know how to ask. Someone named Joe Bob Kerr once said quite nicely, Pesach without children is like a storyteller without an audience. Thank you all for being mine. Pesach, or Passover, was the favorite holiday of my grandparents, Stan and Fran. For many years, I was the youngest child of the family Seder, and as such, the responsibility fell upon my shoulders to recite the four questions. The holy wonderings offered ceremoniously by the youngest child as we celebrated our ancestral deliverance from bondage. Shy, embarrassed by my singing voice, I dreaded the moment that the page turned and everyone went quiet and looked at me in my small chair with my sweaty palms and the transliteration my mom had printed for me tucked into my Haggadah so no one could tell I couldn't read Hebrew. They were gentle, kind, my grandparents, loved books and me, joyfully took me to buy ice cream at the farmer's market every summer Tuesday. Before I was born, satyrs were a community affair. It would not have been uncommon for them to host 40 people in the dining room in the dining room with plants and a layer of dust atop china plates and the dog would bring for the chicken bone on the table locked upstairs. How is this night different? Why do we eat bitter herbs and recline and dip twice and eat matzah? Dayenu, I was enough. They were so proud of my whispers, of my muddled off-key chanting, even when I was so ashamed especially the years when the remnants of satyrs passed, a couple or two who smelled like perfume and who I did not know, blew into attendance in the dusty dining room, settled quietly, and undoubtedly began wondering who this simple grandchild was, and wasn't it unfortunate she was tasked with the recitation. Families grow, and it came to be that I had younger cousins, and the questions no longer fell to me, and satyrs became a night of giggling with my brother and accidentally spilling red wine on white tablecloths of affirming the prophet Elijah was not going to visit because he did not exist and secretly checking his glass for evidence of being drunk anyways. Then families wither and it came to be that one year my grandfather had passed and COVID had barred me from my parents even from shuttling tinfoil dishes of brisket to my grandmother's assisted living. It was not until I had no family to eat with that I felt I could answer the questions I had long ago struggled to ask. This night is different from all others because we have loved ones to share it with openly and freely. Dayenu. There are four children in the Passover Seder, not just four questions and the four glasses of wine. I'm not a scholar. I can't explain the four and four, but I can explain the children. I was once the child who did not know how to ask, who did not know where to begin the strange holiday with its ceremony and stories and dog-eared stained Haggadahs and people I did and did not know and questions that rested on a child in a faraway far language. I think sometimes I'm the wise child these days, a child who led her first Seder and proudly chanted the transliterated questions in front of two friends and a loving partner, and gently encouraged the youngest of us to practice reading with me, who orchestrated the cooking of a brisket in a city apartment, drunk on the story of Passover and from speaking sips from Elijah's cup, drunk on the miracle of having someone to tell the story to again and again and to ask questions. Thank you.